What is manipulation? Well, it's a combination of many things, some of which are negative, but it's not an inherently negative thing. It's a neutral thing that becomes good or bad depending on what it's used in service of. It encompasses things like charm, persuasion, empathy, and also, yes, deceitfulness too. But it needn't be a negative thing. It's about acting in a way that gets you the outcomes that you want for yourself and for other people. And as lots of people have no doubt already concluded, it's a very natural part of our day-to-day -day lives and ways of interacting with people. Let's start with ESTP. ESTPs, I think, are great when it comes to manipulation. Extroverted sensing is not often talked about in this way, but it's excellent when it comes to reading people, sizing them up, and making instinctive assessments of their character, strength, and their position in whatever given power hierarchy. It's about judging the distance and dynamic between them and others, sometimes finding the pressure points and weaknesses of a person. It makes them good at things like negotiating. There is far more subtlety to their approach to life than the typical descriptions make out. I think that they belong in likely because there are caveats to this skill of theirs. Inevitably, they're going to be overly direct, abrasive, and forceful to some people, to the point where those people will be put off, and therefore not even in a position to be persuaded of anything. Also, ESTPs have a preference for directness, which means that certain approaches, although possible, are just removed out of choice. That could justify them being in sometimes, but I think I'll put them in likely for this one. Okay, ISTPs. The only thing that ISTPs hate more than manipulation is manipulating. Often they will, surprisingly, reveal their insights and observations, and you'll realize that they've been silently watching and analyzing the people around them, seeing their maneuvers and plans, and kind of chuckling to themselves about it. Sometimes warning other people if they like them. Then there's the positive side of things. Changing the phrasing of a suggestion so as to appeal to their specific circumstances. Playing the game of appearances, perceptions, and politics. Uh, no. ISTPs, most of the time, have a we'll cross or burn that bridge when we come to it. They are not great speculators. In fact, that's very irritating to them. Having to deal with intangibles that may never come to pass is just draining to them and thoroughly pointless in their view. So I would put ISTPs on the extreme end of not really being interested in things like charm, persuasion, and the interpersonal arts. So I'm going to put them down the bottom in rarely. Okay, ISTJs. ISTJs have an exceptionally low tolerance for game playing of any kind. If they're put into an overly political environment, one of two things will usually happen. Either they'll simply leave out of irritation and disappointment, or they will single-handedly change the culture there. ISTJs have a mindset of, here's what we need to do, let's get on with it and do it. When people bring other, in their view, unnecessary problems and concerns into play, it drives them kind of nuts. Whereas other people might be reacting emotionally to slights or perceived slights, reading into things that other people are saying, having their egos hurt, etc. ISTJs are just going about their business, wondering what the hell is slowing other people down and causing problems. Instead of trying to counter this with lots of superficial charm, persuasion, and other kinds of, in their view, very shallow and transparent tactics, they'll just be ultra upfront with people in almost all situations. So I'll put ISTJs with ISTPs down the bottom in rarely. I think that I can group these two types together for this one. So ENFJs and ESFJs. So extroverted feeling is probably the function that most people would associate with all of these kinds of traits. FE is very amorphous and reactive most of the time. It's almost like a counterpuncher approach to life. They'll wait to see what they're dealing with before they decide on their interaction style. In an ideal world, they want to be all things to all people, which of course is rarely possible. Another interesting trait that both of these types have in common is this desire to not be overly analytical or mechanical in the moment of interacting with people. Both of them can talk in depth and at length about human psychology and the kind of tactics that they might be using, but fundamentally, they dislike that mindset. When they're dealing with people, they want to flow naturally, seamlessly. They enjoy this sense of things happening with spontaneity and serendipity. When it comes to natural charm, finesse, empathy, and the ability to adjust in real time to whoever they're dealing with isn't just a skill for these two types, it's their existence. Out of the two types, I would say that ENFJs are probably more likely to be more conscious and intentional with what they're doing, mainly because of that second slot NI. So I think I'll put ESFJs in likely, and then ENFJs at the top in highly likely. When it comes to social ability and power, there isn't much difference between them, but I think that ENFJs can be a little bit more Machiavellian on average. ENFPs, like all of the other EP types, they definitely have chaos monkey tendencies, which means that they won't be consistently in a charming or persuasive mood. There's definitely a natural variance that they have, either when it comes to being reliable and then flaky, committed and then changeable, and there's also the potential for emotional volatility as well. So that can undermine their aims of adjusting their approach to suit other people 
consistently. They are people who will happily go into battle to defend something or someone they believe in, and that's kind of antithetical to being charming, which to a certain extent means suppressing those things, even when you want to say them. It's more combative. When an ENFP sets their mind to it, they can definitely be highly manipulative, both in the positive and negative senses, but it's not something that they're going to reliably do, in my view, so I'll put them in sometimes. Okay, I'll group ENTJs and ESTJs together as well. Both of them are big personalities who can't help but be impactful. They operate on systems they've created, systematic thinking, practically applied logic, and force of will. That latter trait is often how their persuasiveness manifests. At its most forceful, it's downright strong arming, but more often than not, it shows up as this irrepressible energy and work ethic that becomes contagious to the people around them. It's leading by example and expecting people to match their high and sometimes exacting standards. There is a brutish quality to it. That's not to say that it's a blunt instrument as such, but there's certainly a my way or the highway approach that they take. Since neither of these types typically take the finesse approach when it comes to people, it can limit them when it comes to manipulation. Could they adopt a more meek and mild persona to be able to get their way? Yes, but it's not a state of being they can exist in for long. I'm going to put them both in sometimes. Time for a short tea break. This video is sponsored by You're My Type, an app that makes finding friends and dating more meaningful by using personality types to match people. Check it out if you want to connect, chat and meet with people, or just enjoy the memes. It's available on both iOS and Android and is completely free to download. Okay, ENTP. ENTPs are very much like ESTPs with this trait. They can be great at it, but their personality and the more extreme features of it can be off-putting to certain people and certain types. If I had to pick one side though, I'd say that ENTPs are much better with people than they are made out to be. This stereotype of them being the debaters is probably overplayed, but it does capture an important feature of their type. They are naturally contrarians. If someone states something with a level of certainty, they will feel compelled to push back against it either literally by challenging the person, or just by thinking through the logic in their own heads. Even very chilled out ENTPs will have this instinct, and understandably, people can take that personally when it's almost never intended that way. With the exception of that trait, which some types and some people won't ever really quite get, they don't have many people issues at all. In fact, they are great with people most of the time, in my experience. The functions of NE, TI and FE in a row are an excellent trifecta when it comes to generating possible ways people will act and react. They can simulate people's potential actions and maneuvers brilliantly. They also, and this is underrated about them, have amazing empathy. They are any, can see so many different perspectives naturally, that it's easy for them to put themselves in other people's shoes and think as if they were them. I'm going to put ENTPs in likely. Lots of ENTPs could be in highly likely as well, if they decided to take the edge off some of those other traits. Some ENTPs that are more effy heavy, so to speak, would definitely be in the highly likely category. ESFPs? The ESFP stereotype is one of unrestrained hedonism, often manifesting in a party animal persona. There are elements of this that make sense, based on their traits, but it really misses the mark. One shorthand way to get this point across is to point out that ESFPs and ENTJs can often be confused. When you have a more focused and driven ESFP who has a clear direction they're pursuing in life, the similarities between those two types are very noticeable. If they're in a position of leadership, they can be even better than ENTJs in certain respects, namely when it comes to motivating and inspiring people. ENTJs are usually going to lead by example, with their work ethic, and often with a decent amount of charisma as well, whereas ESFPs are much more willing and inclined to engage emotionally with people. They will really meet them in the emotional trenches. They'll be open and will happily show their own vulnerability when they think it's a good move. I think the reason that this trait isn't usually visible with them is because if you know an ESFP in a casual setting, then they're going to be chilling, having fun, being relaxed, so you will see a very particular side of them. Namely, you will see the most authentic and unapologetic version of them, which might not come across like the thinking about other people and how they will react to them because typically they aren't thinking about that at all. They're just being themselves. So I think it's very context dependent for them and as a result I'll put them in sometimes. INTJs? INTJs are very much a type that can go both ways in this respect. I've often viewed INTJs as, and I've described them this way, charismatic and enigmatic. That is quite different from being charming or being someone who is actively trying to have a particular effect on people. In fact, you could say that the more you're trying, the less charismatic you become, kind of by definition. I mention kind of often that INTJs are underrated when it comes to people, but I haven't elaborated on it that much, I don't think. People can be viewed and conceptualized in different ways. For example, personality type 
prototyping systems group people into these archetypical classifications. For example, you can analyze a person's thinking, the rationale behind their actions, their way of viewing the world, and the patterns of behavior a person displays, then group them. This doesn't require emotional intelligence necessarily, it's just kind of scientific in nature. You could just as well be analyzing animals, I guess technically you are. In addition to that, they're also quite emotionally driven people, often in possession of deeply held values and principles. These act as the furnace, fueling their drive often. So they can recognize that other people will also have their own motivations, vastly different from theirs, and this gives them a great deal of empathy. At the beginning of this, I said that they can go both ways with manipulation. Typically, they refrain from doing it because they see it as kind of unprincipled. But other times, more unscrupulous INTJs would definitely make use of the negative sides of manipulation. I can see why someone would want to put them in likely since they make up 90% of all movie villains but I think in reality I'm gonna put them in sometimes. So I'm going to bunch the two FI dominant types together. This is something of a conundrum to me. I think that FI is a function that makes them highly empathetic and insightful about human nature. And that's one of the key components, if not the main component, when it comes to being able to persuade people. When you can assume the other person's perspective and embody their desires and motivations, then you have a very good blueprint to manipulate them. Or more importantly, feel as they do. Therefore, you know what they'd want to hear and you can bridge the gap between that and what you actually want to say to them. Despite this potential ability, neither type really seems to make use of it that much when it comes to manipulation. I often see them use this skill set in creative ways, such as being able to embody the perspective of different characters, for example when writing stories or acting as them. It could even show up as writing songs from the point of view of someone else. One of my favorite songwriters in an interview once revealed that most of his songs were actually written from the point of view of people he knew and not himself, which was kind of shocking to hear because they seemed so personal and sung with such emotion. Emotion that you should only be to conjure up if these songs were autobiographical in some way. So it's a very underrated skill. A more common and day-to-day -day way it will be used by them is just to be sensitive, understanding, and empathetic when dealing with the people close to them or just people in general. INFPs are referred to as the mediators and I think this applies to ISFPs as well. That might be an example where they'll adjust themselves in order to defuse a situation and calm people down. I'm sure that unhealthy versions of these types do it but in general they're in the category of have the ability to do it but typically don't. One other alternative is that they often do it and they're so good that no one even notices. That is a scary thought, but I'm gonna put them both down the bottom in rarely. Okay, ISFJs. I think that ISFJs are people who do a lot of benevolent manipulation with the aim of helping people. It can be subtle and barely perceptible stuff, like an invisible hand guiding events. They do read people exceptionally well, as good as any type in my view, and they have lots of the character attributes, such as being patient, understanding, empathetic, which make them very able to act upon the insights they have. NE is their inferior function, so they're not going to be down with the topsy-turvy world of political machinations and game playing, so it's something they'll dip in to if they think it will be helpful, but it's not as prominent for them as the other high FE types, I don't think. They are quite an under the radar type in many respects, so perhaps I'm underestimating their potential, but I'm gonna put them in sometimes. INTPs? For INTPs, I think this is a contentious topic. I'd say that out of all of the types, they're one of the most likely to study the dark arts of manipulation in great detail, but it's a different story when it comes to putting it into practice. As Morpheus says, there's a difference between knowing the path and walking the path. Way back in my first proper video on this channel, I talked about how studying personality types is something that offers the promise of using TI to solve FE problems. Understanding the mechanics and logic behind human personality, creating this system and framework to understand them, that's of course deeply appealing to INTPs. It's exactly the same when it comes to things like charm and persuasion and so on. These are things that also have underlying principles and formulas that can be understood and weaponized. The issue, as I mentioned, is putting these things into practice. Although INTPs will analyze this stuff in a detached and non-judgmental manner, it's still going to bother them that these things are actually effective in the world. To them, these are shallow things that ought not to be dignified with results. For that reason, I'm going to put them in sometimes. They will do it when they need to, but most of the time they have a strong preference for a more principled way of going about things. Okay, INFJs. INFJs often get offended when I describe them as being great manipulators, but I really think it's true. So INFJs will definitely struggle with the problems of being too agreeable and dependent on harmony to feel settled and comfortable. However, it's probably best to view second slot functions as tools. So FE is a tool for INFJs in the sense that it's the method by which they interact with people and a large part of how they go about getting what they want in life. It's like the weapon they bring to a fight. They can rely on it. If there is someone that needs to have a positive opinion 
opinion of them, more often than not, they can make that happen. By analyzing and understanding people, they can tailor their way of interacting based on whatever they've seen. And it's usually a successful approach. Their NI is great at classifying people in terms of their archetype or personality type. That in combination with their third slot TI makes them great at analyzing people. Then they can bring in their second slot FE to actually act upon those insights. The important thing to point out with INFJs is that they can't really switch this off. Their brain is constantly working this way. So I'll put INFJs at the very top in highly likely. If you want to manipulate me, please like and subscribe and feel free to check out the other videos on this channel which go more in depth on each type and have a look at the links below to see my individual social media and the Love Who Discord server.